Hello everyone, so now we are going to start reaction number 10. So I cannot wait to be done with these reactions. We've been doing this for a long time now. We're nearly at number 13. So have a look at this. In the previous lesson we looked at reaction number 8 and 9, which was going from a halo alkane using elimination and we got an alkene. Now if you take an alkene and you add stuff onto it, then you could form a halo alkane. And so of course we're going to call that addition. So reaction number 10 is going to be hydrohalogenation. So we're going to add a hydrogen and a halogen. So let's have a look at how that's going to work. And so to start this reaction we're going to need an alkene. And guys I want you to quickly try to figure this out. It's actually very easy. Here we have an alkene and we're trying to turn it into a halo alkane. And we're using a process called hydrohalogenation. So we're going to add a hydrogen and a halogen. So what would we need to react it with over here? Now for example we could use HCl or we could use HBr, HI or HF and that's why typically in textbooks and on my table it will just say HX. X represents any one of the halogens. So let's go with HCl and so the H is obviously gonna go somewhere here and then the Cl would have to go to the other carbon. Remember we're never going to attack this one over here. You're always going to attack the two carbons that are next to the double bond. But guys you can't just choose this process randomly. Do you remember when we looked at a few lessons back there was the that rule called Makovnikov which said that the richer get richer and the poorer get poorer. Well that was when we were busy doing we were busy doing addition and we're also doing addition here. So we need to bring up Makovnikov's rule again which is that the richer get richer and the poorer get poorer. And so we need to look at which carbon is richest in hydrogen. So it would be this carbon over here because it's already got two hydrogens and so the richer are going to get even richer. So this hydrogen is going to attach there and then Cl would obviously go and attach onto that one. There will come a time when we will use poorer get poorer. That comes when we, that, that comes in when we do some types of elimination. Not all elimination but sometimes we need to use that. And so once this happens your product is going to look like this. And so what we can see is that the Co ended up bonding over there and the hydrogen ended up bonding over there. So we can see we've got the Cl there and then the hydrogen over there. Now we're not going to have any other products because when you have addition you're taking this molecule and you're putting it onto that molecule. You're not eliminating anything and you're not replacing, you're just adding things on. And so that is the only product that we will have. Let's quickly look through reaction number 11. Reaction number 11 is almost the exact same as number 10, so we'll go through it very quickly. All that this one, or what's different is that we call it halogenation. And so instead of adding a hydrogen and a halogen, you're just going to add two halogens. So let's take a quick look. So we're still going to start the reaction off with a with an alkene, but now to get it to to do halogenation, you're only going to add halogens. Now you can't just add one. For example, you can't just attach a Cl on over here because then this carbon would have four bonds, but then this line would have to break and then this carbon would only be surrounded by three. You might be saying, well, why don't we just leave that line over there? Well, then this carbon would be surrounded by five. And so we need something to attach onto this carbon, but also that carbon. So we're going to have to use a halogen that has that, that is diatomic, for example, Br2. And so obviously what's going to happen is that one of them is going to attack here, and then the other one is going to attack just afterwards because as soon as one of them attacks then one of the carbons becomes unstable and then a different one attacks. You don't need to know why that happens um, but I'm just, I just like to add a bit extra. So we know that the two BRs are going to attach and so we're going to end up with a product that looks like this. And so what we can see is that this BR over here has attached, maybe that one went there, and then this one went over there. It doesn't really matter which one went where, but we can see that the product now has two BR molecules. So we converted an alkene into a haloalkane by adding two halogens, whereas with reaction number 10, we added a hydrogen and a halogen, and that's why we used HCl instead. So that's it for reaction 10 and 11. Only two more to go. That is awesome. Thank you very much for watching.